Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today, I just kind of was uh, looking at my uh, my stats from the season, um, you know, fishing the Bassmaster EQs. We fished nine events, um, and other than three events, we cashed in, uh, or other than four events, we cashed in, in the rest of the tournaments that we fished this year. So five out of nine, not bad, but we didn't have a great point season. We finished in 45th, and that's because we had 169th, 163rd, and 175th. Uh, and, uh, and I've already talked about it, you know, in other videos, my head just was not in the game this year. You know, we were building this house. We got, we had a baby, <laughs> you know, we, we had a little baby Riley in March and, uh, in <clears throat> just was not in a good spot, you know, uh, mentally, uh, out there on the water. I don't feel like I just, I just had so much going on. There was a lot of stress, but Anyways, that may or may not have accounted for those three real bad tournaments. I can tell you for a fact when I was out there on the water, it just didn't feel right. Um, but uh, so we did have three bombs and then we had, you know, some some good tournaments, including two of my best tournaments that I've had fishing the Bassmaster Opens. I, you know, I fished, uh, I'm not sure how many, but probably about 15 Opens in the past and previously, my best finish was a 29th place uh, in uh, Louisiana. I think that was um, the, uh, no, sorry, 27th place in uh, at Douglas, Tennessee. Um, and, uh, and so 27th place was my previous best tournament uh, finish in the Opens. But this year, I had a 24th at Toledo Bend and a 14th at Watts Bar. So, I mean, by a lot of standards, it wasn't a great season, but also by a lot of standards, it was a good season. So, um, you know, we'll just kind of say it's it's so-so. Um, but anyways, I want what I wanted to do for this video was to go through each of these finishes that I've had this year and kind of talk about uh, what I could have done better and also some things that I did very, very well, just kind of analyzing each of the tournaments from the season. And so we've got to start at the very first event at Eufaula, Alabama. Uh, we had two Eufaulas on the schedule. One was a bomb and one was pretty decent. Um, I ended up finishing 40th there. I got kind of lucky because we had a disqualification um, uh, in the top 10, if you guys don't recall that. Somebody got disqualified, and I ended up um, moving up a spot to get a check. It was kind of a bummer on the way home because I thought for sure I was going to get a check. and But in the Opens, you got so many anglers, 225 anglers. And so it's like even though you could be in like the 20s and it be like 5 o'clock at night, you, you still have so many anglers in the weigh-in line uh, that um, you never know if you're gonna get a check. So that was one of them where I was just like constantly, uh, you know, just refreshing, refreshing, refreshing. And then finally when it ended, I was in 41st, but got to move up. Anyways, Alabama, I feel like uh, where I struggled the most was practice. Um, I started in the area that I ended up fishing the tournament, which was right there by the ramp. And I really, really enjoyed that style of fishing. And, and because I found out that the, there was a good number of fish there, they were good size and all that, uh, early on, I kind of had the blinders on for the rest of the event. So I didn't like, I wasn't trying enough other stuff you know uh, i wasn't being very creative and trying a bunch of different things i just kind of got locked in on that one thing had that on my mind and had a hard time kind of shaking that off but ultimately that one area ended up um uh you know having quite a few fish in it even during the tournament you know even with all the pressure there was a lot of guys fishing back there and i feel like i fished a flawless tournament um based on what I had found. Again, it wasn't a flawless practice. I feel like it was a C minus at best. Um, but during the tournament, utilizing, utilizing what I had, um, you know, in that, that general area, I did very, very well. You know, the first day we had kind of a storm day. It was kind of 
uh, you know, windy and, and uh, cloudy. And I ended up fishing a chatterbait and just, and just moving around that creek and kind of finding the key little stretches and all that and fished phenomenally. I think I had, you know, 16 pounds or something around there and uh, had a good day that day. And then the next day, conditions changed. So I immediately pivoted and, uh, and, and went after some flipping fish, you know, punching the grass mats back there in that area. And that's how I caught my fish. So making that switch right off the bat, immediately knowing that the calm conditions weren't going to be conducive to throwing the chatterbait, uh, meant that I made the correct adjustments to have a good finish there. So bad practice or not great practice, good tournament. The very next tournament, same thing. Chat, uh, you know, my practice was terrible. Uh, I, I can't say that I made strategic errors in practice. Uh, I can say that I just didn't feel like I was finding what I needed to find in practice at Toledo Bend. Um, and so the shallow bite was really tough for me. You know, occasionally you get a good bite, it, but you know, you don't want to occasionally get a good bite in tournament fishing for practice. You want to know that if you're going to an area, you're going to, you know, you're going to catch them or doing a thing, you're going to catch them. And I just didn't have that. You know, I, I did try a lot of like things that I'm just not all that great at fishing offshore uh, and all that stuff, live scoping and just threw that out. And again, this is another tournament where the practice sucked. Um, but the, during the tournament, I fished absolutely flawless. I feel like this is uh, probably my best event of the year, honestly, even though it's not my best finish, uh, finishing 24th, uh, w as far as like uh, making do with what I had, 100% really, really good finish here because I went out and immediately recognized a, a shad spawn was happening and ended up um, fishing brand new areas um, but running a pattern where I was finding these these shad spawn um, locations and ended up making a switch went to a uh, went from a, a, a top water bait I was using a the goat toad in uh, pearl color and uh, and was fishing it like a or it wasn't it wasn't a goat toad it was just the the a billy goat um, but I was fishing it on the surface like a, a toad and caught some fish that way but then immediately once I killed queued into the the shad spawn deal ended up switching to a spinnerbait the uh, z-man sling blades and went to work and just caught them like crazy that first day that first morning and then when that slowed i picked up the uh, z-man leap frogs and just tried to get a big bite so i had a pretty decent bag but i wanted to go ahead and and upgrade and the frog was the only way that i could imagine upgrading and ended up going a long period of time that, that first day after the, the shad spawn deal uh, fizzled off. Went a long time without a bite. Sorry, I'm looking around because I got like wasps that I've been killing here and there. Um, but went a long time without a bite, but then all of a sudden ended up catching like a six pounder, six and a half pounder at the end of the day on that frog, which was a crazy bite. Um, so yeah, um, that first day, Fished great the second day, same thing. Uh, leaned a little bit more on the frog that second day. Uh, it was calmer, it was sunnier. I was a later boat flight, so it, you know that shad spawn was shorter. But the frog actually ended up being a key player around those cypress trees, um, even during the shad spawn. So caught a decent bag then, and ended up finishing 24th. So again, practice could have been better. Could have wrapped it up tighter in a little bow. Uh, but the tournament, man, we fished really, really good. All right, so now we start getting into where things start getting a little shaky mid-season. Um, we go to Bugs Island in Clarksville, Virginia. Uh, first off, shout out to the uh, bed and breakfast we stayed at. Where? What was the name of that place? Um, oh, shoot. Uh, we stayed at this beautiful bed and breakfast um, there and uh, I'll have to find it and just put it in the uh, text below uh, but awesome place to stay but anyways um, Clarksville Virginia Bugs Island the one thing that I had heard about this lake before going was that it's a good brush uh, you know bush flipping lake which is so right up my alley it's not even funny and so I was like really excited I was like praying 
for lots of rain, high water conditions, and guess what? That's exactly what I got. But, you know, for some reason, I felt like I sh should start, you know, live scoping and really start looking offshore. And because I was, I was starting to hear reports from some friends, like my buddy Joey and Nia, um, you know, that that they were catching them pretty easy off on these points with live scope. And I got so caught up in that, man. I had some good days of practice, um, you know, down the lake. But um, because uh, I I couldn't get anything going with with live scope. And I ended up going shallow, but I, even though my best days were down in that Nutbush Creek area, uh, down towards the dam in the clearer water, um, I, I tried to force the dirtier water up the lake for my shallow bite. So I was just like, you know, if there's gonna be a, a shallow flipping bite in the bushes, it's probably gonna be best in the dirty water anyways. So that's what I did was I just focused all my time up there. And there was like, it, the bite was just dead. Uh, it, it, like, I didn't even think that there was a flipping bite going on because the areas that I decided to try, it wasn't happening. But this is really where things went wrong. Instead of saying, okay, well, the bite's not happening flipping in this region, you know, in like Grassy Creek or whatever, um, I should go check the south end of the lake where I had my, my best days of practice like the first couple days and go flip that clear water. A lot of guys ended up finding those fish in the clear water, flipping those bushes. And unfortunately I did not because I didn't go out there and uh, and try it. So I ended up um, just, just putting myself in the wrong part of the lake. So really bad practice. And I felt like I was fishing okay during the tournament. Like I felt like, even though I, my, my confidence wasn't like all that great, um, I felt like I was fishing okay. Mechanically, I felt like I was good. I felt like I was making good decisions with what I had, but ultimately I just caught two really small bags, not even mediocre, pretty, pretty tiny bags and never had any opportunities at any bigger fish. So, um, and I totally missed that flipping bite that guys, uh, got on, on the South end of the lake. Um, or the, you know, towards the dam in the clear water, that's where they were smashing them. Guys like Bobby Lane, Andrew Upshaw, there's a bunch of guys that were just, abs not just like grinding it out, flipping, but catching them so good. And so it's just, it's always a bummer. You're always gonna miss something in a tournament, but it's always a bummer when the deal that you wanted to happen happens and you miss it completely, that sucks. So um, Bugs Island was really a hit and, and having a 163rd place finish there really put me in a bad spot in the tournament or in the EQ standings. You know, I had to have a flawless season for the rest of the year to, to even have a shot, but we didn't, um, spoiler alert. Uh, but um, the next one was Wheeler Lake. Um, that was one that, you know, I got caught up in all those like, you know, shallow bar areas in Decatur Flats and thought that that was kind of uh, gonna be the way that I wanted to fish, but then soon realized like uh, way too much pressure on these areas. I need to, to start focusing on my strengths and and really you know wasted a lot of the, the practice doing stuff that isn't what I like to do. And then finally ended up um, the last day, the half day of practice, I, I keyed in on a flipping bite in, in uh, kind of that, that close to the ramp um, area. And uh, so got on a, uh, you know, a pretty decent flipping bite, but it was kind of a little bit too late because I wasn't able to expand on that area. And there were so many guys uh, that fished that way uh, during the tournament in the areas that I had found. So I was fishing behind guys like Greg Hackney and, and really, really good flippers that are very, very methodical and just, you know, top of their game at flipping. And so I just felt like I, I was, um, I, I feel like the area was good, but it just had too much pressure. Um, and I ended up losing a couple of big fish that day. I lost one absolute giant underneath this, this, um, willow tree. I, I made a really good move to like fish this one tree on this one tiny little Island 
um, it, it, I was just passing and I was like, that looks good and I bet nobody's hit it. So I went up there, made one pitch with my palmetto bugs up there and this giant ended up like bogging me down underneath the tree and I broke it off in like 22 pound tests. It was crazy. Um, ended up finishing 67th in that one. So not a bomb, not a terrible bomb. We got a, we got a, uh, a wasp here. Needs to be taught taught a lesson always have that on the deck even with a screen and porch man what it, what is this deal they get in everywhere um but yeah we finished 67th that's really not a bad tournament in in uh bassmaster open standards because you're talking about 67th out of 225 not a terrible tournament but not great uh, and then we had Eufaula, Oklahoma, probably the lowest I've ever been in tournament fishing ever. I, I, I've, I completely got just gutted at uh, Eufaula. Um, I was told before this event that I could fish anywhere on the lake and do well. I was, I was, in, just, I was just so focused on fishing shallow. And I found like the first two days of practice, I'm like, where are all these fish? I was fishing like all over the lake and avoiding like that main drag area where everybody was at and was just not getting a lot of bites at all, you know, doing what I like to do and uh, really struggled. And then finally started launching right there where we were going to, to launch for the tournament and immediately started catching fish. Um, but I feel like it was a little bit too late and the shallow bite ended up kind of like, um, you know, just disappearing. Um, and I, I, I feel like I could have found something shallow, you know, fishing docks or something like that. Um, and fish my strengths had I spent all of my time in that main drag middle of the lake area. Um, but ended up just, I just, again, it, it was, it was, I really feel like I just had too much going on uh, in my life outside of the tournaments that I just wasn't making good decisions during practice. And that really put me behind the eight ball. I ended up fishing a lot of like the, the same stretches that guys ended up doing well, but I just could not catch them. I came in with three that first day and then I was devastated. You know, I'll be completely honest. I was like, all right, well that just ruined my entire open CQ year as far as standings go. So, um, what do I do now? So the second day I literally just went out there and I was like, I'm going to learn this live scoping thing. Went out there. Uh, and by the way, the first day I caught like 40 something fish, but only three keepers. So that was kind of frustrating. Um, but the second day I just kind of gave up. I've never given up ever in my tournament career ever, but I went out there and I was just like, I'm just going to go see if I can figure out this live scope gig. Cause a lot of guys were catching them that way and ended up going out there, you know, with like a jig and a Demiki rig or Ned Meeky rig and trying to, you know, catch fish on live scope. And I still sucked at that. So don't tell me that live scope is so easy that you, that anybody can go out there and, and uh, win tournaments with it. Um, it takes, it does take a lot of skill and, and time to kind of figure that out. And I definitely couldn't figure it out. And, uh, yeah, uh, really, really down part of my career, but it also was a, a character builder tournament. You know, now that I've kind of, you know, got my, my head out of my rear, uh, so to speak, um, at the end of the season here, I look back and I'm like, that's, that was an awesome tournament as far as like learning things about myself, the fishery and all that. So we finished 175th there. That sucked. Um, then we ended up going up north to the St. Lawrence River. The biggest issue with going up north for me is that I'm not a smallmouth guy. Yeah, I've fished a lot of tournaments uh, in smallmouth territory, but usually uh, for the the majority of the tournaments that I've, I've fished up there, I've always fished largemouth and a little bit of smallmouth. Um, so like Champlain, I always had the option to go down a tie or, or go up to the Missisquoi uh, Bay area and, and you know, fish for largemouth and then mix in some smallmouth. So I think I've only weighed two full bags of smallmouth in tournament fishing total in my life. Uh, and both of those were in the same tournament on St. Clair a few years ago, or on Erie, but I ran to St. Clair. 
No, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Two full days of 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 smallmouth, and then uh, and then I went to largemouth after that. So I don't have a lot of expertise uh, in um, in in smallmouth. Unfortunately, I still have a lot to learn. But uh, the St. Lawrence River is actually a place I've I've cashed a check at before. The first time that I was there. And I fished largemouth <laughs> in that tournament and mixed in some smallmouth. You see a trend here. Um, and in this tournament, um, had something weird happen. I got another. These freaking. These wasps are coming back to life. You got to show them. Show them who's boss. So uh, I didn't intend on just killing wasps while I'm sitting here in this video, but. Um, so St. Lawrence River, something weird happened. I was at ICAST and flying back, I ended up getting some weird rash on the back of my, my calf that ended up getting infected. There's actually a major scar there still. Um, it got infected. I had to, I, I missed a f the first day of practice and then a partial of the second day of practice because I had to go to the hospital and, uh, in, um, uh, Messina there. Had to go to the hospital. I actually went to the uh, the urgent care first, and then they were like, "You've got to go to the hospital. You you got to go to the ER. You, we can't do anything for you here because it was like bubbling and it was like black and 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 like purple and it was it was gross um, and leaking. You know, it was just disgusting. But um, and I also had a fever associated with it. But we got through that, and you know, I just did not utilize my time well one thing about the st lawrence river is you with your practice you really want to focus in and hone in on what region you want to fish and then just triple down on it you can't just bounce around from you know a, a waddington area or the messina area down to you know the clayton area or down by the the lake and stuff like that that's exactly what I did. So I had a shortened practice period already, but I just kept on bouncing around and spent way more time on the road than I did actually fishing. Um, so obviously I set myself up for failure in that one. Um, I will say, you know, I felt like I was fishing fairly good. Uh, that first day, um, I was actually releasing a lot of keepers um, because I they were like two and a half pounders that I knew weren't going to help me. So released a lot of fish. But then towards the end of the day, I was like, gosh, I really got to start keeping some of these keepers because I'll, I'll look kind of stupid. Um, so I ended up only coming in with four that day, unfortunately. And then the next day, I was just like, I'm going largemouth fishing. I love largemouth fishing on the St. Lawrence River, so I'm going to do that. Caught a limit in 10 minutes, and uh, and then went out and and uh, caught some some larger smallmouth, you know, on a chatterbait, just covering water, and uh, ended up, you know, had a mediocre day even then, um, and f ended up finishing 169th. So another terrible tournament, um, but that kind of ended the bad tournaments, um, and. Kind of what happened was I, I ended up, you know, I was in a real bad spot, wasn't, didn't have a lot of confidence, was just real stressed out with everything going on in my life, and then ended up going to Alaska, regrouping, getting a little bit of perspective on life, coming back, and we had a good stretch of tournaments, and, and now we end up feeling pretty good. Um, so we went to Watts Bar, Watts Bar had a pretty good practice found a pattern that I was like, I'm going to win this tournament. If everything goes my way, I'm going to have an opportunity to win this tournament. And that's exactly what ended up happening. I was, you know, September, You when you're out there in the heat, you think, oh, it's still summer patterns. But really those fish were in uh, getting into fall patterns where they were following those shad in the backs of creeks. And I was able to uh, uh, figure out that deal um, using a chatterbait and I was catching really good average size fish like a lot of fish in the three pound class and that was like good as gold so going into that tournament I, I feel like I had a good practice and knew exactly what I was on I didn't over practice didn't beat my head against the wall I was just like this is what's gonna do well in this tournament and I'm gonna focus on it and ended, ended up going out there and just not executing very well first day of the tournament uh, ended up 
uh, only catching three fish, bringing in three keepers, and ended up losing three solid keepers. So I lost two in the two and a half to two and three quarter pound range. Uh, one that was another good solid, probably 16 or 17 inch keeper, um, and only came in with like eight pounds or something like that. So that day was really what did me in. But the second day wasn't that much better. I got all the bites to be able to have like a 17 pound bag that day, which would have got me in the top 10, um, but ended up losing uh, a four, uh, another one that was like three and a half to four, and then several other like really, really good sized fish, um, good quality. And, uh, and so came in with a good bag, still caught some, some good fish, but I ended up losing a lot of, of really key fish that would have, if I had caught all the fish that I had bite the first two days, 100%, I would have been leading that tournament. Um, and then, um, you know, who knows what would happen the second day, but I think that I would, or the third day, I feel like I would have had a pretty good day that third day because I had honed in on the one creek that had the majority of the big bites. But how many other people had lost fish that created an issue that, that kept them from, you know, leading the tournament? So I'm not complaining. It's just I didn't I didn't uh, execute in that tournament and uh, still had a great uh, finish, 14th. But I, I feel like it was one of the 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 uh, worst tournaments of the year as far as you know executing on bites that I got. The next tournament was at um, you know uh, Lake of the Ozarks in Missouri. That one I'd never been to before. Really didn't do a ton of research. Uh, found out early on that there's a lot of docks and there's a lot of boat traffic uh, on that lake. And uh, I ended up finding the pattern that I, I wanted to run, you know, first thing, very similar to, to what I was doing at Watts Bar with a chatterbait, fishing a shad pattern type deal, and was running docks. And uh, found the bite was on uh, in, in one region of the lake down closer to the, the ramp. And that's where I thought I was gonna spend the tournament. The problem was I wasn't seeing a lot of size. So um, I was a little bit worried about that. But then uh, I ended up going up lake cause I was just tired of beating up on the fish down lake where I thought I was gonna fish and ended up finding that I had way better average size like three pluses up lake. And so realized that's where I needed to be. So I made a 60 mile run each day uh, up the lake. The first day was phenomenal. I ended up catching like 12 to 15 fish in that three pound class range, which was great. And, uh, and then the second day that bite completely shut down. Something happened with current or, or whatever it might be. Um, but the, the shad ended up pulling off of the docks and the bass, you know, followed them. So, um, that, that was completely dead. And I had to pivot and went down Lake found, you know, to the area that I thought that I was going to start the tournament in, uh, or fish the tournament in early in practice and ended up finding um, finding that the, the bite was still on there doing the, the you know, fishing the chatterbait around the docks. And so um, ended up catching a limit and ended up getting 32nd place. So another check there. Uh, and so fish pretty good. Um, you know, just was able to, to make a big pivot, big change and still uh, cash a check. And then finally, we get to the last event down on Leesburg. Now, Leesburg, or the Harris Chain of Lakes, uh, is a, a chain of lakes that everybody assumes because I, I you know, uh, fished in Florida a lot. I went to college in Florida uh, that I love the Harris Chain. The Harris Chain is my least favorite Florida fishery. Uh, I call it the, the non-Florida angler Florida uh, fishery because it seems like guys out of state, you know, maybe up north and stuff, they come down and they do well at the Harris Chain. Um, but I like Kissimmee and Okeechobee personally, but I had a little bit of a bone to pick with Harris because I, 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 the most recent tournaments I had there, I didn't do very well. I've had good tournaments like top tens there, but, uh, you know, recently hadn't had very good events there. So I wanted to break that cycle and have a good tournament here. So the first day I went down to Apopka, that's where I wanted to fish, you know, because when I go down to Apopka, I love to flip. And uh, and that's kind of what I wanted to do. And the first day of the tournament or practice, I was like, this is on. You know, there was a ton of, of bites to be had down there the first day of practice. And so I was like, well, gosh, this is probably where I'm going to be. 
But then I ended up going to Harris the next day uh, and just didn't like it. It just didn't fit my style, you know, the, the way that I like to fish. So I started against what I said I was going to do, um, you know, before practice. I said I was either – I was going to check a popka. If pop, a popka wasn't on, I was going to 100% stay on Harris. But I ended up just not liking the way Harris was setting up, especially with the wind we were going to get and ended up exploring some other lakes. The only lake that I didn't check out was Griffin. Uh, I, I didn't have any interest in, in doing uh, the Griffin deal because that, that lake bur has burned me so much for little fish. Um, but anyways, ended up tripling down on, on Apopka. The one thing that I didn't do very well was I didn't try other things. Like I didn't try to fish like a frog or like a, a turbo fatties in the the pads and stuff like that i just kind of did the same old thing which was flipping and by the end of practice that seemed to be starting to really taper off um and uh and during the tournament ended up each day getting fairly lucky got a five and a quarter the first day and a four and a quarter the second day and then uh rounded out uh, the rest of the limit on a popka with little squeakers, you know, little 12 and 13 inch bass and, uh, and had to leave a popka midday to go catch, uh, some better fish on, uh, you know, the first day was a frog. I went to back to Harris and caught one, on, a three and a half pounder on a frog. And then the second day I, I caught a lot of my fish in the canal waiting for the lock. But the biggest factor for that whole tournament had to be the lock. The time management in that tournament was tremendously difficult. Um, I ended up spending probably three and a half hours both days minimum waiting to, to, to you know, either idling or, or running or waiting for the lock. And so that was kind of a big deal. Um, but we ended up catching enough to have another good tournament. We finished 29th there. And the, the biggest thing that came from the last three events was just kind of breaking out of that, that bad cycle of negative, um, you know, ha having some negative thoughts about, you know, how I'm fishing, which I think kind of started uh, in 2022 too. I, I didn't have a good year then, but now after these tournaments yeah it wasn't a great phenomenal season by any means but uh, i ended up uh, really working through things and and fishing very very well in a lot of tournaments so i really can't be mad about that uh cashing five checks which you have to finish in the top 40 out of 225 um cashing five checks in the opens is is pretty pretty solid so um overall uh, i think that if I was to give myself a grade for the entire season, it would have to be a B minus, um, but uh, definitely better than a C because I, I feel like, you know, uh, I ended up fishing really, really good during the tournament in a lot of these tournaments. Not all of them, but in the tournaments, I ended up fishing really well. I think what I need to work on for next year is my practice strategies. I need to tighten up my practice, which I think is, is very, very important for tournament fishing and really does dictate overall what, what you're going to, uh, what type of success you're going to see. So anyways, guys, I know this is a long winded kind of like review of the season, but just wanted to kind of throw this video out there and share with you, uh, my thoughts on how I did at each event. So anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you have any comments, drop a comment below. If you enjoy this type type of content, make sure you like share, subscribe. Otherwise make sure you trust the process. I'm going to see you out on the water. Take care.